In this video, I want to cut through all the hype around solid state batteries and discuss a more realistic view of the technology from solid power's perspective. I'm Jonathan and welcome to Cleaner Watt. As I've talked about in several other videos, solid state battery technology, especially when it comes to automotive applications, has been way overhyped and there have been a lot of promises that I don't believe will be kept. When you actually dive into the details like we have in past videos, you find out things like the actual batteries don't live up to performance claims, the companies really aren't making solid state batteries but they're making a hybrid semi-solid state battery, or their solid state battery technology doesn't have very good cycle life. You'll often find out that it's very expensive to manufacture the solid state battery technology. Often the solid state battery technology is not very scalable, so it really can't go into mass production at the current levels of technology. And it often becomes apparent that this technology is not ready for prime time, but is still some five years away. However, one of the things I appreciate about Solid Power, one of the companies that are working to create all solid state batteries, is the fact that they don't really hype up their technology quite like the others, and I feel like they're very realistic with their claims and with their timeline. Solid Power doesn't claim to have an all solid state battery that will be ready for automotive applications in a year or two like some other companies have claimed. In order to get up to date information from Solid Power, I sent an email to them and they were gracious enough to answer all my questions and send me a slide deck. So in just a minute, we'll dive into those slides and we'll dive into those questions that they answered. But before we do that, I would just want to give a really brief overview of the company Solid Power. Solid Power is an industry leading provider of sulfide based all solid state batteries. And they also have joint development agreements with BMW and Ford. I also found it really important that they stated clearly on the website that they work exclusively with all solid state battery materials, so they're not working on quasi solid state batteries or hybrid solid state batteries that have part liquid and part solid electrolytes. Also another big differentiator which we'll talk about more later, but they already have a megawatt hour battery line pilot line at their facility where they can test and manufacture their new batteries. This is helping them rapidly iterate and improve and also demonstrate the scalability of their battery technology. Solid Power is also very realistic with the expectations of the technology on their website where they say, quote, Thus far, no group has demonstrated an all solid state battery that can meet all mobile power performance requirements while also being manufactured using scalable processes. Overcoming these barriers in all solid state battery performance and cost is Solid Power's mission. So now that we've given a brief overview of Solid Power, let's dive into the presentation slides they sent me and also the questions that I asked them that they graciously answered. One of the questions that I asked them was, what is the basic composition of your battery electrolyte? They answered, Solid Power has always deployed a solid sulfide electrolyte in our all solid state cell design. And here on this graphic, from solid power, they show the difference between some common solid electrolytes, polymers, oxides, and sulfides. And as you can see, they show the advantages and the challenges with each of these electrolyte types. Based on this information, and I've validated this information with other research, sulfides have a lot of advantages when it comes to using them as electrolytes in solid state batteries. However, there is the issue of moisture sensitivity and there is the issue with producing defect free layers. Here's another chart comparing these technologies and showing once again that other than moisture stability, the sulfide based electrolytes seem to be the way to go. So we know they use a sulfide based electrolyte for their all solid state batteries, but how long is it actually going to take for these cells to get to market? How long is it going to take solid power to put these in automotive applications? According to this article that was published in October of 2020, quote, Solid Power shipped 250 prototype battery cells that use its solid sulfide based electrolyte. The firm's partners will test performance of the cells and see how well they stand up to abuse. Though the prototypes aren't suitable for automotive use, that's clearly what Solid Power is aiming for. So with this in mind, I asked Solid Power, when do you expect to have your batteries in automotive applications? They answered, we expect 
Vehicle start of production by 2025. Solid Power will showcase cell performance in an in-vehicle demonstration in the years leading up to 2025. Solid Power is entering formal automotive qualification testing in early 2022, which includes multiple phases that can take 12 to 18 months each. So Solid Power is very realistic, and they're saying here that it's going to take four to five years of continued improvement and testing before you'll see these batteries in actual automotive applications. The next category I'd like to dive into is the scalability of Solid Power's technology. As I mentioned in several past videos when we compared solid state battery technology to Tesla's 4680 battery cells, the current solid state batteries that are coming out of companies right now aren't ready for automotive applications. And beyond that, it seems like the scalability of their technology is not there as well. However, according to this Yahoo Finance article and also directly from Solid Power, as we'll mention in a minute, Solid Power's proof of scale is a differentiator. So on this note, I asked Solid Power, when it comes to the scalability of your technology, what part of the process is the limiting factor? They answered, Solid Power's all solid state cells are manufactured on a continuous roll-to-roll -roll production line that operates and lives within a dry room at negative 40 Celsius dew point, which mirrors lithium ion industry standard processes. We are able to produce solid power cells without the need for an ultra dry environment, our production line can be staffed by multiple technicians at one time. The scalability of their battery technologies also reiterated once again on their website where they say, quote, our all solid state batteries are manufactured in a manner that is highly compatible with industry standard roll to roll manufacturing used in current lithium ion production. Here's a graphic from Solid Power showing the process of manufacturing their batteries in their current megawatt hour scale prototype production line. Here's how that process compares to the standard wet process of creating lithium ion cells. As I mentioned here, solid powers processes eliminate formation cycling and electrolyte filling, which account for 30% and 5% of capex in a typical gigawatt hour scale lithium ion facility. So not only is their technology scalable with somewhat traditional processes, but it seems like this is actually going to be faster and more scalable than even current battery technology because it takes less processes to create these cells. The next important category that I'd like to discuss is the battery cell cost. I asked them, will your solid state technology be more expensive than current generations of lithium ion batteries? They answered, Solid Power confirmed that our sulfide-based all-solid-state batteries do not represent a manufacturing cost risk due to the technology's compatibility with industry standard roll-to-roll -roll processes. And with the removal of costly manufacturing steps used in lithium-ion production, we expect to eliminate nearly 30% of the capex in a typical gigawatt-hour scale lithium-ion production plant. With mass production and market adoption, economies of scale will further push these prices down. Like lithium ion, solid powers all solid state batteries, most expensive raw materials come from the nickel manganese cobalt cathode. Here's a chart from solid power showing the cost per kilowatt hour of a conventional lithium ion battery there on the far left in the purple line, and then showing their different production processes that eliminate some of these costs, and it should lead to an optimized solid state battery cost somewhere around that $50 per kilowatt hour mark. This falls right in line with what I expect Tesla's 4680 battery cells to cost at the cell level sometime in the next three to five years. The next really important category they'd like to talk about that is often the Achilles heel of solid state battery technology is what kind of cycle life do solid powers all solid state batteries have? In order to get this answer, I asked, what is the cycle life of your latest generation of test cells? What are the future targets? They answered, solid powers 20 amp hour cells, which were produced in December of 2020, have just gone on test for cycle life. We don't have any data to share at this time. However, we are confident that they will follow similar cycle life trends of previous megawatt hour produced cells and of smaller two layer pouch cells. Solid Power's two amp hour cells, which were produced earlier in 2020, 
have achieved over 30 cycles at near room temperature today as they continue to cycle and as we continue to track the data. They are following the same path as our two layer cells, which have passed 250 cycles at near room temperature and are continuing to cycle. Long term, we expect solid state batteries to meet or exceed the best available lithium ion cycle life. Solid Power's lab scale cells can currently exceed 1000 cycles, and we are working to match that performance in larger format cells coming off our megawatt hour scale prototype pilot line. So if everything continues as it should and as they're seen in the lab, they should see somewhere over 1000 cycles for their solid state battery technology. When it comes to solid state batteries, this is actually quite impressive, but it still has some way to go before it matches conventional lithium ion batteries. For instance, according to Elon Musk on Twitter, the 2170 cells found in the Model 3 and the Model Y are currently designed to last around 1500 cycles. The next important factor to discuss is the energy density of solid power cells. I asked them, what is the energy density of your latest generation of test cells? What are the future targets? They answered, solid power's 20 amp hour cells achieve 330 watt hours per kilogram today. Solid Power has laid out a technology deployment roadmap that will push energy densities above 400 watt hours per kilogram in 2022. To put this energy density in perspective, on this chart you can see my estimates for the energy density at the cell level for Tesla's 4680 battery cells as well as the 2170 cells and the 18650 cells. Solid Power's 20 amp hour cells do have a very impressive energy density. The last question I'd like to cover that I asked Solid Power was, can your technology be used in cylindrical cells as well as pouch cells? They answered, Solid Power is focused on the pouch form factor due to partner specifications. The pouch format is the preferred cell format for solid state cell designs in order to create uniform contacts between electrode layers, which is key to creating high performing cells. The reason I asked this question, the reason why I believe this question is important is because of Tesla's breakthrough with their structural battery pack. Tesla's structural battery pack, as you can see here, only works with cylindrical cells. And when you combine this structural battery pack with the front and rear castings on the vehicle as they plan to do in the near future, this leads to a mass reduction and also a range increase opportunity. When it comes to standard battery pack designs, the energy density at the pack level is always lower than the energy density at the cell level because of the non-active packing materials that go into making a battery pack. However, with Tesla's structural battery pack breakthrough, their battery pack actually becomes part of the structure so you don't get that negative impact on the watt hours per kilogram or the energy density at the pack level. The reason this is important is because even if Tesla's 4680 battery cells lag behind a little bit at the cell level when it comes to energy density, when it comes to the pack level, this will help them catch up and maybe even pass more energy dense cells when it comes to the actual implementation in a vehicle. In conclusion, while it still will be several years before we see true all solid state batteries from solid power in automotive applications, once all the technical issues are solved, Solid Power appears to have a big advantage when it comes to scalability. Based on what I can tell, I believe Solid Power has a great shot at success and could be the leader in all solid state batteries in the not too distant future. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and that you learned something as well. If you're not already subscribed to this channel, please consider subscribing. And if you do subscribe, if you click the bell icon, you'll be notified when new videos are published. Also, if you did like the video, please consider clicking that like button because it helps other people find the video as well. I also wanted to take a moment here at the end of the video to thank the Patreon supporters who support me every month and help make this content possible. A special thank you to my performance supporters and also the other supporters on the screen. If you'd like to find out more about the Patreon community I've set up, I'll put a link in the description below. Thank you so much.